Hello there everyone, welcome back to my channel beautiful, how are you doing today? My name is Joseph and welcome to another Should You Pull video for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now this weekend we're expecting not only the massive, massive release of Final Fantasy XIV and Walker, which I'll get to in just a moment as well, but also the release of Dimensions and Transcendence 6 over on Dissidia Final Fantasy. And we're, with that we're going to see Caius get his brand new BT weapon, rework and some additions to his kit, as well as Golbez getting the same treatment, green BT, a couple of amps, little extras to his kit, and also selfie LD, so there's lots to talk about in this video, as well as the ET6 itself. So strap in for a long video, and hopefully this is all stuff that interests you, and if it is, then stay tuned and keep on watching. Before we get started, don't forget to check out all of my social media links in the description box below. I'm actually going to start by shouting out my, my patrons over on Patreon first because I want to talk about this Friday and the events over on Twitch as well. But today's patron is going to be Light Husky, who is not only one of my Ultima tier patrons, but has been an active member of my community for a very long time. So a huge thank you goes out to you and of course to all of my other patrons. And having Kane featured in your title card is amazing because I love Kane, I like drawing Kane, and I hope that you enjoy this title card as well and if anyone else is interested in joining up with Patreon and getting lots and lots of benefits including drawn title cards especially for you at my highest pay tier then perhaps you'd like to consider clicking on the description a link in the description box below now with regards to twitch obviously this friday is dimensions and transcendent 6 over in the uk but it's also the release of final fantasy 14 endwalker so while i do stream every F uh, dffoo event as it goes live and this one will be no different in terms of starting that Obviously with login queues and downloads and all of that with 14 and Walker, it's going to be a challenge just to get into the game and it's something I'm really excited about and I feel very passionately about trying to get more involved in the 14 community as a content creator. So this is a call to arms as it were because obviously the more of you guys come along to even lurk in the chat, uh, you know, just come and chill. I'm actually going to be leveling Sage first before I start the MSQ, so you'll have no dangers of spoilers from me, not for me. Anyone spoils anything in for me, then I will be setting fire to the rain. <laughs> um, then, you know, it would be lovely to have as many of you as possible because having all the viewers means that people will kind of look at me and go, oh, perhaps this guy's worth checking out. So I would appreciate it greatly if people would like to come along and chill. We can talk about Dissidia, we can talk about other things, but just as a Call to arms, as it were. It'd be lovely to see lots of you on Friday. And then, of course, lastly, don't forget to check out all of the other content creators and resources out there for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, with special mentions going out to Tonbury Troop, Leo, Bob, and Mediu over on Reddit, Dissidia Info, Dissidia Compendium, and DissidiaDB.com, as they are all resources that I use very heavily on this channel, and you should too. So as always, what we do with the start of these videos is we're going to start by taking a look at the banners, what's on them, and what characters are featured on them. So as you can see here, the first banner that we're going to be looking at is going to contain Golbez and Barsh. Now Barsh gets nothing new from this particular banner. His LD's on there, but honestly, you really shouldn't need to be pulling for Barsh at this point. He's fine. He doesn't really bring anything new to the table. It's certainly not if you have the likes of Zack or Galoof or Oren or Gladio. Barsh doesn't really stand out amongst his peers at this point in time. Gets a great C90 later on, but so do a lot of characters. And then we have Fang with her EX on there because she's just kind of there. And then Golbez is returning with his LD and his BT. Now, Golbez gets a little bit of a rework to his LD board here, which basically just equates to he gets some more damage. That's pretty much it. Like, so his shtick was the fact that he stole more bravery than he dealt damage for, and that basically just gets increased so that he's more competitive with today's kind of damage dealers. And then his BT effect also gets some really nice additions to it, so now you get party attack up by 80%, and party brave damage cap up by 30%, and of course on top of all of that you get brave damage up, and the big thing where enemies can't gain bravery while his BT effect is up. So the fact that if you wanted to green gold bears, you get this twice is a thing. However, it lasts for four turns. Four. That's not a lot of time. It, it, and it doesn't really do much like for HP damage or anything like that it's it's okay but with green resources being as small as they are there are just other characters that I'm sure a lot of people will pick over Golbez. He's not bad but he's very very linear in what he does. He does dark damage. 
it's kind of it. He just does a lot of it. <laughs> he's, it's, it, you know, he just gains more bravery than he deals damage. He's not the only character that does that anymore. And of course, we do have the fact that the BT effect makes it so that enemies can't gain bravery. However, Setsa is so popular and has access to that on a skill 2 that realistically you shouldn't really need to use this. But if you wanted to use Gold Bears because you really like him, then you could go in for it. It's very, very sort of similar situation to Arden, where favourites, yeah, you can make use of Gold Bears, no problem. But I think that by and large, unless he's your favourite character, I wouldn't go chasing after him. I certainly wouldn't go pulling on this banner for either Gold Bears or Barsh, unless Gold Bears is an absolute favourite of yours, much less green him. So now let's take a look at the other banner, which I'm sure is going to be a lot more enticing for a greater number of people. So if we take a look over here, we can see that it's going to have Selfie, her brand new LD and the rest of her kit. Kaya's, his LD is obviously a returning weapon, but it's also now going to feature his BT, which is brand new, and the rest of his kit. And then Prishy X, because Prishy X is there. Now, Caius does also get a rework here, but it's a bit more substantial than Golbez's because it's a rework to basically his entire kit. Now, Caius is a debuffer at large, like the Doom debuff was a big thing for him, but his damage was never all that great. But this definitely gets changed up and coming with his new rework because both Pulsar Burst and Aya Bahama, or at least the plus versions of them, get significant damage upgrades, multiple HP dumps, the works, extra overflow, all the good stuff, but it is only on the plus versions of these skills, which require you to have five stacks of his body and soul buff, which you'll only get, provided you have the entirety of his kit, after the first use of one of his skills. So my suggestion, use Aya Bahama, because the actual casting of Aya Bahama puts the debuffs on the enemies for longer than just the entry does, and then you can just kind of go off with Pulsar Bursts and deal loads of damage. The LD board also gets reworked here, so basically this is a rebreak more than anything, but the rebreak condition on this is now changed, so instead of having to have all of the debuffs on them, it can have any one of them. So as long, if Doom, basically if Doom has run out, you still get your rebreak. And you also get uh, extra bits added onto his Heart of Chaos buff, which also includes the fact that you don't have to have the Heart of Chaos buff for him to be able to benefit from these. Because the Heart of Chaos buff is basically like a second life for Kaius in that if he gets killed, he doesn't get killed. He instead goes to one, then restores all of his HP and then comes back with just, just not as strong. But this now means that he doesn't have to worry about, about any of that. He just has more health, basically. So you get more damage against debuff targets, all that good stuff. All your debuffs are like uh, like extended for an extra period of time, so you now get three turns of the Doom buff, which is the one you really care about. And instead of Doom only breaking when it ticks to zero and disappears, it now breaks every single time the uh, like it ticks down one. So this is going to be quite handy if you like just making sure the enemy doesn't have bravery. In terms of comboing it with characters that like breaking, sometimes it can be really awkward. There it was a time where I used, I think it was during Vayne's event, where I used Caius Call and Doom Chaos triggered and it didn't actually increase the Lufenia Orb. So there are situations where this isn't great for rebreak strategies, but it is still really, really useful. Now, of course, Caius also gets a BT this time around. Now, his BT, I think is actually pretty cool. It's not anything super crazy, but it, in, in conjunction with all the nice things that he's gotten, mainly his damage, it's a nice one to have if you like debuffing strategies. So, Incarnate Summoning turns him into Jet Bahama, you know, very, very cool stuff. You get Party Break Bonus up by 500%. So, what this actually means is whenever you break something, you'll get an actual battery off of it, because we actually always had gotten batteries off of breaking an enemy, but it was really insignificant. Whereas with Caius's BT effect, it actually means something now. So you could use this alongside the likes of Vayne or any rebreaker and try and get the most out of that. You also get general damage increases, so Brave Overflow, Max Cap Up, which is always useful, we always like Cap Ups. Uh, party HP attack up while attacking a debuffed unit. And then as long as the enemy has any of the chaos debuffs, so defense down, all the ones that he gets from Aya Bahama, etc., you then get an instant rebreak regardless of what's going on after his turn has gone off. So it, it may basically turns you in, it leans into his rebreaking strategies as well. And then with two out of three, you get party brave damage up by 50%. So it's just an all around package 
for attacking debuffed enemies. And because Caius inflicts lots of debuffs all at once, he can kind of benefit from this for a long period of time. Six turns isn't the most, like, uh, you know, biggest period of time for a BT effect. It's no Bart's, for example, but it's long enough that you can benefit from it. But obviously the biggest problem with Caius as a character is that his debuffs are, apart from Doom, they're only okay, but they're all framed and they all take up a lot of space. So if you're using debuff based characters, then sometimes his debuffs are actually less desirable than they would be from other characters. Like they're not as strong as Vanille or Faris or anything like that. So they're not, it's just taking up a lot of space. Sometimes that's a good thing. Like with DE Transcendent, that's a very good thing. But there are other situations where you just want more consolidated, stronger, framed debuffs that do lots of things in one slot, rather than taking up loads of slots with just to have Caius. But his damage upgrades and the rebreaking like strategy that he leans into a little bit more do make him a solid damage dealer. He's also not the quickest character in the world, but when he does go off, all of his kit does have a large amount of damage in it. Like, even now his EX is still really quite good. It launches, which is a very strange thing for him to do, has a bit of delay in it, and also has multiple HP dumps. So it does work out very well. He's not the best character in the world, I don't think, but he does have a lot of nuance that makes him very interesting. So the last character that we need to talk about here is going to be Selfie. Now Selfie's LD and Rework are actually very exciting because they completely, I mean I love these ones when they do that, it completely switches Selfie's role into a launch based character while still providing a lot of the uniqueness that she always did. And she actually provides the launch in a unique way as well, so I'm actually very excited by this LD. So the Rework that Selfie here gets, she gets a buttload of uses on Drain, which is great because her skill count was never that great to begin with, but now you get a AoE 100% HP attack off of it because the Drain was rubbish before now, but it also, not only does it deal damage now, but it also it changes her Brave Regen buff into a framed buff called Garden Festival Committee to give you Brave Regen, Max Brave Up, and also a launch damage buff to your party uh, in terms of like actually dealing the invisible launch HP. So when that comes down to zero, they can be launched. So basically it makes it easier to launch your enemies. And then Wall gets more damage reduction on it and it becomes a, a free turn as well and also provides the Garden Festival Committee. So you're never gonna run out of that. It's just a really good buff to have. But then we look at her LD. Her LD is really good. Like it reduces all enemies brave to zero, then the batteries, then you get a Pinello style like AOE 100% HP damage that doesn't eat her bravery up, delays all enemies by two turns, and then inflicts a launch, which is nice just as an attack. But then you get the buff and debuff from it. So the buff gives you party launch damage, as in the actual amount of HP damage you deal during a launch, as well as more brave regen and party brave gains up as well. We'll just sprinkle a little bit of that in there as well, because that's all really good. You just get loads out of that, and then the actual spice of the Rapture is the debuff. So Rapture is a four turn after LD boards and everything, debuff on an enemy that says, I'm going to get launched every time I get hit. And every time the launch goes off, you it then ticks down one. So you get four turns of guaranteed launches after Selfie's used Rapture. So not including the Rapture attack itself, of course and you get more bravery damage out of it, or you get party battery, sorry, equal to HP damage that you dealt during the launch. So, Selfie is providing big defenses, HP, re or HP healing through drain, and massive amounts of launch, and let's not also forget her EX. So, Aura, still completely unique, increases EX recast speed for the party, there's nothing quite like Aura, and she, I don't know I say that she gets a lot of, like, I say this about a lot of characters, but she gets a massive glow up with her C90 later on as well when Charlotta LD comes around. And yeah, there's just a lot to like about Selfie. I like launch characters, and I like ones that are pushing the offense while still kind of holding back and making it so I can be defensive. And I'm looking forward to using her alongside, obviously, Vayne, who is one of my favorite characters, because he can now launch, like, periodically through like just every turn that he takes, which makes his turns more for it, like more valuable, even though he's getting the free ones. There's a lot that I just really enjoy about Selfie, so I would very much like to have this LD. 
Now, the only new call ability that we get here is going to be for Selfie, so I'm just going to focus on hers for this. But her call abilities are actually pretty nice as well. Like, Wall was one that I used quite a lot when call abilities were first released, or, like, not long after, just because of having, like, the initial Brave and Wall up was quite nice. But it's not anything super special now, but it does have the damage resistance and debuff evasion up, which is good. But Rapture as a call is actually very nice as well, because it does have that reduce all enemies' bravery to zero gives you the, the, the straight up um, launch ability while also delaying enemies by one turn and not, you know, getting full HP while battering. It's just a nice one to have. So I think that while I wouldn't use the call all that often, because if I was after launches, I'd probably just stick selfie in my main party. I do think that it's a noteworthy one and one at least worth looking at for when you don't necessarily want to bring her along because there's a lot to like about her call abilities as well. I just think that Selfie's a great character with a very long future ahead of her and I really enjoy the way that she plays in this game and the fact that they've added extra facets into her kit that increase your damage massively because you get battery during launches which is essentially just two extra HP dumps but that's still a lot of damage at this point when you're doing it every turn for like a period of time and then you could incorporate her. She's just combo-tastic and that's the kind of character that I absolutely love so I'm very much looking forward to trying her out. So now let's take a look at Dimensions and Transcended 6. So we're, as we do with all the DE tiers, we're going to go through each of these individually. So the left-hand gate has two bosses in there. So we've got the Turtle and we've got a Sand Kraken. The actual fights themselves really aren't that different from any other type of Sand Kraken or Turtle fight we've had. The Turtle retreats, it jumps out, it does damage, the Sand Kraken delays a lot. It's that kind of thing, we've seen it all before. But the orbs in this are kind of unique in that the two enemies actually have different orbs. But Caius, this is the one that is built for him, is made for this particular event. So one of the bosses, so the Sand Kraken will have um, a orb where every time he takes damage from a debuff, his orb will go up, whereas the turtle needs to be broken by a debuff. So, obviously, as I say, taking Caius along is going to help a great deal with this, but it doesn't have to be Caius. There is another character that I think works very well, particularly for breaking through a debuff, which is Trey, and because he does damage as well through a debuff, he also kind of tackles that as well. So if you haven't got Caius or you don't want to call for Caius, Trey is somebody you might want to consider as an option. Although I, the other character I think will work very well here, especially considering the kind of enemies we're fighting here, is going to be Auron and Kor. Now, I have Caius already, or at least the LD, so I plan to use Caius here, but if not, then I think Auron, somebody like Trey, just a, a whopping damage dealer that doesn't turn hog because the enemies obviously need to take their turns in order for the orb to kind of increase, then you should be fine with that. It's not an especially difficult one, because the left and right gates are typical Lufenias, they're not Lufenia pluses like the, the center gate is, so as long as you're taking characters that can deal with the mechanics of the fight, this one's actually not too bad. As a side note for this one, as a matter of fact, I've seen clears where people have actually taken Auron on his own through this gear, this gate using either Thancred or Faris Spheres. It does take a bit of work to do, but I have seen it done. But that being said, Auron is kind of an all-star for this particular Transcendence tier because he's really good in this gate. He's also really good in the middle gate as well. So if you have Auron, I would save him for this particular event. Now, the right gate is a return of Sinx boss, which is the giant castle gate thing. And it requires a yellow crystal character. So the orb on this one sounds really harsh. And it kind of is in its own way. It is fairly restrictive because it asks you to launch the enemy three turns in a row, which is like pretty restrictive. However, you don't have to have selfie for this. Like selfie obviously makes this really easy because LD debuff, off you go, launch, 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 off you go. No problems there. And then it's all just a case of rebreaks and delays with Quistis or something like that, where you can just make it so the boss never gets a turn in the first place. But if you don't have selfie or you don't want to pull for selfie, there are some little extra tips and tricks that you can use. If you have Sid Reigns, Sid Reigns is going to help a great deal here, particularly in combination with the say somebody like Afmal with a call on her that allows to launch. So you could take say Sid Reigns with Kais call. Give Afmal the ability to launch on her next turn, with Afmal's LD buff then making it so that Sid Reigns will get the next turn, and then he launches again. So that's one way that you can increase the orb, because it does increase the orb counter by 15, which is 
quite a lot. So you can kind of save it for that. Or you can take Sid Rain's cool ability on a burst character and then just launch period like just over and over and over again during a burst phase. That's also going to do it. You know, even something like taking Tifa along, characters that have launches, calls that have launches, and making it so that you can just go, okay, I just need to time things correctly so that I'm getting launch, launch, launch three times in a row. It doesn't matter about the damage almost at that point, but you're still going to get a lot of damage out of it. Then you'll get to be able to push the orb up that way. However, if you don't want to worry about the hassle of that, there are much worse characters that you can pull for in order to finish an event easily than Selfie. You will likely use Selfie again. So, you know, there are worse characters that you can do for that. Now, the center gate on this fight is actually pretty annoying, and it's debuff central with this one. It's actually a two-way fight. Only the first wave actually has a Lufenia Orb, but the second wave has a mechanic that will drive you up the wall. Um, the first one is against the Argent Efficients, which were the boss from Agrius' event, who, after they've taken a certain amount of damage, or after they've taken a certain amount of turns, they'll lift themselves up into the air, buff themselves like crazy, and then throw loads of HP attacks at you. But, in this fight, they have a Lufenia Orb, obviously, and obviously Lufenia Plus mechanics are in effect here, so your Brave Reductions are going to be pretty heavy. So, after 80%, they uh, have their Orb, which can only be ticked up by inflicting 8 debuffs in one turn. Now, there aren't very many characters that can do this, but there are plenty that have been recommended by myself and other content creators, I'm sure, over the course of time, so you should have at least one of these available to you. So, Caius obviously can do this, because you can inflict four debuffs on each of the enemies, and that will count as eight. Caius can do it. Faris obviously, is very good at it as well. If you have Yuffie's LD, you can use Yuffie. Gabranth can do it, because he has multiple debuffs on his abilities as well. Basically, you just need to inflict eight debuffs at a time through the through this fight in order to be able to get through the first wave. However, don't spend all of your debuff inflicting calls at once because you're going to need debuffs for the second wave. So the other thing to bear in mind with the first wave is that after, say, I want to say 30%, they get really tanky. So if you still happen to have Bart's BT Plus available and you didn't use him in the last Transcendence tier, then he's really good here as well because it gets to a point where you're dealing a lot less damage. So therefore, being able to kind of use Brave Gains and Batteries to be able to push through is going to help a great deal. And then I'm also, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how I want to use Vayne in this particular fight because I kind of want to figure out how to use Vayne here. But I, again, if you've used Auron, Auron's going to be fantastic here as well because he's going to help your defenses stay up. He's also going to be able to inflict counter attacks, which do like melee resist down, which is going to help various other characters. You're able to then just keep going with damage. I'm actually thinking about using Core here as well because Core and Auron, we know work really well here. They keep your defenses up, they keep your attack damage up. Auron's got HP regen, so you should be able to take the, the brunt of their attacks. And then a BT character next to them will work really well for the sakes of that BT synergy. So now we move on to the second wave. Like I said, the second wave doesn't actually have a Lufenia Orb. But what they do have is a mechanic that changes depending on the number of debuffs the enemies have. So you will not deal damage to them unless they have at least one debuff. They, you know, you also have, they also deal a lot more damage as long as they have four or less debuffs. If they have six or less debuffs, they, every time you act, so do they. So if you looked at the whales from the last boss rush, they do that. As long as they have six or less debuffs, you need seven or eight. And if they have anything less than eight, then their, their stats go up. So... Bearing in mind that they also cleanse themselves at 89%, so quite early on in the fight, and then again at 59%, and because they're taking turns quite frequently, unless you're putting 8 debuffs on them at all times, they're going to run out of their debuffs, so you want to be able to reapply debuffs very quickly, otherwise it's going to be a nightmare for you. So again... Auron, I'm thinking will work really well here because his counter attacks will like counteract the fact that they're taking loads of turns, deal them damage, and also inflict a debuff. I'm actually considering putting an or uh, like a sphere on Auron, something like maybe Kamenor or Faris or something like that, so that he's inflicting another debuff when he counters as long as he's at max HP. Which honestly, it's Auron. It's not going to be difficult for him to be at max HP. So that way you're getting an extra debuff, just, just whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're inflicting that extra debuff. And then Core again is going to make take be able to take advantage of the fact that the enemies move a lot, unless you've put loads of debuffs on them. But again, Faris, uh, you know, uh, Caius, Amidatelian even, Yuffie, 
all those kinds of characters are going to be really good here. It doesn't even necessarily have to be in your main party. They do cleanse, but they only cleanse twice. So as long as you're able to keep on top of that, then the rest of the fight should go relatively smoothly, providing you're dealing a large amount of damage. So now, of course, we have Would You Pull, the section of the video where you, the viewer, get your chance to let everyone know whether you would or wouldn't pull on any given banner and why. So I've actually sort of changed things up a little bit with any banners that have entirely returning kits because I think it would be better for uh, people who are watching. So and, and obviously my patrons themselves mentioned this as well, so thank you for saying so. Um, but thank you again for your votes and your comments. With Golbez and Barsh, as you can see here, like I said, I've changed it up a little bit. Nobody is pulling here for gems. No one's even using over 100 tickets. 10% of people were like, eh, I'll use less than 100. 67% of people said no because they already have all of the gear they want from it. And 24% said nah because they don't really want it. This doesn't surprise me. Like, even with the people saying that they don't want it, I think that there are better characters these days than Golbez and Barsh. And honestly, I could sit there and say, yes, Barsh gets a really good C90, but... Most characters do. I know I've said that for Selfie, and, uh, you know, there's a comment in the in the, this section as well that says the same sort of thing, but most characters get a good C90. It shouldn't really be a factor for whether you're going to pull for a character or not, in my opinion. And then going over to the Caius and Selfie banner, 28% of people said they were going to use gems here, 47% of people said they were going to use over 100 tickets, 22% of people said they were going to kind of go uh, less than 100 tickets, and 3% of people said no. So largely people do want something from this banner. I'm probably going to go tickets here because I'm waiting for Lena still, and Lena was somebody that had been released prior to Dimensions in Transcendence 6 before now, and had Lena come out, Maybe I would have changed my mind on this particular banner, but as things stand, I would really like to get Selfie. Whether I use tickets or gems here on the back of the feather, I want to maximize my chances of getting a new BT. I'm not sure yet, but let's go ahead and have a look at some of the comments here. So Proto Mega says, I already have gold bears and plan to green him, so I'm just pulling for Selfie. I will likely just use her once and then wait for her great C90 rework. See, this is an interesting take, purely on the fact that I, my opinion is that if I'm going to pull for a character, I want to get lots of uses out of that character before their rework, because otherwise I'd just pull for them when the rework came out. But I do think that there is something to be said for pulling now means not having to pull later. And I did wonder like, if perhaps um, Charlotta was maybe a seasonal banner or anything like that, but it does look like because Selfie gets reworked again, when that banner is released, I think it's safe to say that Selfie will come back on that banner, no problems asked. But I would rather personally be safe than sorry and grab Selfie now. But that, it does help that she is a character I really like anyway. Gem Akai says, thinking I'll go for gems for Kaius and Selfie. I was unable to get Kaius when his LD first came around and Selfie's ability to make enemies that much launch more launchable makes the banner a very appealing one indeed. That said, Kaius is, unironic is ironically kind of the meh prize of the two. So I think if Selfie's LD appears early, I'll cut my losses and hopefully get Kaius when his FR comes around. It's just a bit unfortunate that he shows up so little for those that miss him and yet when he does show up, he's never a very wow sort of character. Selfie, on the other hand, seems to get a lot of love for her, strong launch support and base capabilities, plus she's a favourite as far as the FFA crew goes. I think that Caius is uh, undersold a little bit, but I do think that he definitely doesn't have the lasting power of, say, Bart's or Sid Reigns or some of the other characters out there. Certainly with C90 not being that far away from where we are now, I would like him, but that's because I want a new BT. I already have his LD, so I can only speak for myself, but I would definitely just leave the banner alone if I were to get Selfie nice and quickly. But if I were to get the BT... I'd be really happy about it, I'm not going to lie. Goose says, I like the selfie likes trains, but that's where my fondness ends. Her LD on release seems okay at best, with the debuff ticking down on each launch reminds me of Sync a bit. But I do like Aura a lot. I'm really tired of people saying so-and-so gets a good C90, most of the time it's just a completely empty statement. But, Selfie gets a notably very good C90 that's been tearing JP apart with Camelot at the moment. If I weren't on a mission to have every LD by 8 rerun, I'd definitely skip till she returns with Charlotta. So this was a comment I was mentioning earlier, and I do think that there is, a, it's definitely a valid statement to say that character gets a good C90 is kind of a, a non sequitur, because most characters get a really good C90. But it is nice to see that Selfie is still getting use 
to this day over in JP, which does speak volumes of her longevity at the very least. And then Cobalt Zork says, going all in on gems for Golbez. So, wait, sorry, I couldn't keep a straight face with that one. Golbez just doesn't do enough to warrant any kind of investment unless your name rhymes with Polteracial Zion, which would be one of our, uh, our patrons as well who really likes Golbez. If I have Kaius LD, I just think I got bored and I, I, I threw some lucky tickets at him back when he was released. It'd be nice to pick up his BT though, but I'm not chasing it. I'll go reasonably heavy with tickets for Selfie though. She's almost never lucked out of content and faster charging EX is still very powerful for newer units that don't have EXs that smell faintly of cat litter. She's got a lot of utility and a broad scope, which is sometimes just what the festival committee ordered. I think this is why I like her. She just kind of goes with a lot of people. She goes really well in a large plethora of various different compositions and therefore I would quite like to splash her into my party. And in the situations where you're like, right, damage phase, LD, character BT. The uh, one thing I would like to mention actually when it comes to selfie is that her rapture debuff doesn't tick down during a burst phase. So that's something that's really noteworthy as well because it frees up the call slot from Sid Reigns if you wanted to have a launch every turn during a BT. So that mixes that up a little bit as well. There, I just really like Selfie in this game and I think that she's very fun. I think that she provides a lot of benefits and I, she's a character I would very much like to have. So now we ask the big question whether we should be pulling for Caius, Selfie, Golbez or Bash. Golbez and Barsh's case, it's a hard no from me. I know I don't normally do that, and I normally try to give, like, pros and cons for each of these characters, but honestly, if you don't already have Golbez, which I think if you really loved him, you already did, unless you're a newer player, in which case it would literally be a recommendation from me only if Golbez is your favourite character. Barsh, you can pull for him again later when he gets his C90 if you really want to, but honestly, there are just better tanks out there now than him. When it comes to Caius and Selfie, I think that this is a very interesting banner. Like, I think that some players will really, really want to have Selfie at the very least, and then Caius BT, to me, is the definition of a, oh, that's nice character, like, oh, I'd like to have that, but I wouldn't actively chase it. Now, if you don't already have the LD, then you're, you probably would only use Caius if you had his full kit at this point. Unless you were using him for DET6, where I would use him on the left gate, and then probably not for the centre. I'd use his call abilities instead, and then probably just stick him on the bench for the, for the foreseeable future. Now, I, have, I honestly, as I've been speaking and writing my notes and things like that for this video, I kind of, at the beginning, was like, yes, I'd like Kai SBT because it's a new toy and I'd really want it. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, well, if I got it, would I want to green it? And I'm like, eh, probably not. Just because he's like, yeah, he's got a lot of really nice aspects to him. Like, I think that honestly the big thing with him is that 500% break bonus because that's something that can't be interacted with, at least as of yet, by other game mechanics. So Lufenia Plus doesn't care about it. Like, you know, he doesn't care about the reductions on that because you're still going to get that. You know, there's a lot of nice little niches and he's kind of an all-rounder. Like, he has launch in his EX. He has, obviously, all of his debuffs that take up a lot of space and aren't the greatest debuffs in the world. But they are there and you get, you know, a lot of damage out of his stuff. But with C90 coming around, what? six weeks time, something like that, you're going to see that damage elevates a great deal in general with that point, unless, and therefore, unless you've got a character that is a, like, very much a damage dealer through and through, they're probably not going to get used as much in C90, because damage is the first thing that gets power crept, and without damage, Caius just doesn't really do anything particularly special. He's good. If you love him, then you can use him for a decent amount of time. But he hasn't had his C90 yet in JP, as far as I'm aware. And therefore, you know, there are just going to be other characters that you use instead of him. Selfie, on the other hand, I really love. Like, the fact that she swapped over to a launcher, and the fact that she still has her aura. She, uh, I really love how her kit gets improved and changed. And I think that she's a character with a very, very long-lasting set. She can, I think that one can kind of plop her into a party where she's the only launch-based character because the rest of her kit's quite good. However, she doesn't have brave damage at all. Like, none of her abilities do bravery damage, apart from her brave plus, which really you don't want to be using. But so therefore, and she doesn't increase bravery and HP damage 
for your party outside of launches. So you, if you are going to use her that way, you'd probably want to pair her up with somebody that, like, or a BT character at the very least, like Jekt or Vayne or something, that do have a large amount of bravery damage increases in their own effects. So bear that in mind, but you can also take her in a fully comp, like, just a full launch comp, because obviously the Rapture debuff only lasts for so many turns before it runs out and then you'd have to reapply it. But I just think she's a really cool character. She may not be for everybody, but like there's a certain level of bias because she kind of ticks all the boxes for me as a support character, and therefore I really enjoy her. She works fantastically in brave game teams as well. Like if you like Ishtola, you'll probably like Selfie as well. And if you like compounding her with other brave game characters, she'll probably perform really well for you. And yeah, she does have a long, bright future ahead of you. So instead of her, so for me, I'm gonna pull for Selfie LD here and. If I get Kai SBT, I'll be like, oh, that's nice. Maybe I'll green it, just because I personally have a lot of resources for greening characters, whereas other players may not because they've gotten some of the previous BTs, whereas I haven't. So I would like a new toy to play with, but that's kind of where it ends for me with Kaius, apart from the fact that I just quite like using understated characters. So there is that. I wouldn't chase after Kaius BT, though. It's kind of a, that'd be nice. Selfie, on the other hand, I really like. So that's going to be all for today's video. I know it's a long one. Dimensions and Transcendence videos are usually longer. And the fact that we've had multiple characters to cover on this video means it is a long one. So thank you very much for joining me. Take a load off. Go get yourself a cup of tea and chill. And join me on Friday as well for Dimensions and Transcendence 6, at least up until N Walker goes live. And then I hope to see you all there. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications. And I hope you have a really lovely day. Thank you very much for joining me, beautiful, and I shall see you next time. Take care.